Good morning students. Today we are going to discuss about standard electrode potentials of D block elements. We have learnt in a redox reaction one substance will be oxidized and the another substance will be simultaneously reduced. The substance which is oxidized will be called as a reducing agent and the substance which has reduced will be called as an oxidizing agent. If you want to measure the power of an oxidizing agent or reducing agent, we will be measuring in terms of their standard electrode potentials. The standard electrode potential is defined as the potential difference between an electrode and its solution in which it is immersed. If the standard electrode potential of a metal is large negative, then that metal is a powerful reducing agent, which means that metal will readily lose electrons. If in case, if the standard electrode potential of a metal is having a positive value, then that metal is a powerful oxidizing agent which means it will have tendency to gain electrons. So this is a very important point. So you will remember if E0 value of a metal is negative then that metal will show tendency to lose electrons and if E0 value of a metal is positive, then the metal will show tendency to gain electrons. Now we are going to learn about trends in the metal 2 plus ion to metal standard electrode potentials. This metal 2 plus ion to metal standard electrode potential is defined as enthalpy change when solid metal atoms are converted to metal 2 plus ions in solution. So this E0 value is equal to enthalpy change. And this enthalpy change depends on three parameters. The first parameter is the enthalpy of atomization or enthalpy of sublimation. The solid metal is converted into its atom in the gaseous state. For that some energy is required. That energy we call it as enthalpy of atomization. Since energy is required to separate the solid metal into gaseous atom, enthalpy of atomization will always have a positive value. The next enthalpy change that is involved is the first ionization enthalpy. From the gaseous atom, most loosely bound electron will be removed. For that, some energy is required. And that energy, we call it as first ionization enthalpy. And after forming the monovalent cation, we will remove the second loosely bound electron from it. And for that, some energy is required. And that energy, we call it as second ionization enthalpy. So after forming the metal 2 plus ion, that ion is getting solvated. So some amount of energy will be released and that enthalpy change we call it as hydration enthalpy. So E0 value when metal 2 plus ion is converted to metal will be the sum of enthalpy of atomization, first ionization enthalpy, second ionization enthalpy and hydration enthalpy. Now we will discuss how the standard electrode potentials 
of metal 2 plus ion to metal of 3D series varies. In the graph, you can see the observed values and calculated values of metal 2 plus ion to metal standard electrode potentials. These two values are in close agreement with each other. And you can see as you move from titanium to zinc, the standard electrode potential is moving towards less negative value. Now we will try to understand why the E0 value of metal 2 plus ion to metal becomes less negative as we move across the series. When we move across the series, effective nuclear charge increases. So, first and second ionization enthalpy value generally increases. So, if the atomization enthalpy, first and second ionization enthalpy is going to have a greater value than hydration enthalpy, then E0 value will become less negative. Because we know atomization enthalpy, first and second ionization enthalpy will have positive values, whereas hydration enthalpy is alone, energy is released, so it will have a negative value. So, if enthalpy of ionization and atomization increases more than the hydration enthalpy, then E0 value will become less negative. In the graph, you can see E0 value of metal 2 plus ion to metal of all the elements of 3D series are having negative value whereas copper has positive value. We will try to understand why E0 value of copper 2 plus ion to copper is having positive value. We have learned this E0 value is depends on enthalpy change. And this enthalpy change depends on three parameters, namely enthalpy of atomization, ionization enthalpy and hydration enthalpy. We have also learnt if enthalpy of atomization and ionization enthalpy values are going to be more positive than the hydration enthalpy, then E0 value will be less negative or positive. In the case of copper, enthalpy of atomization is very high and enthalpy of hydration is very low. As a result, E0 value becomes positive. In the graph, you can see for manganese, nickel and zinc, E0 value is more negative than the regular trend. This is because nickel has more negative hydration enthalpy. So, it has more negative E0 value. In the case of manganese and zinc, on losing two electrons, it is going to attain the stable configuration. So, they have relatively lower second ionization enthalpy. Hence, they have more negative E0 value. You need to remember in general, E0 value will be more negative if enthalpy of atomization and ionization enthalpy value is lesser than the enthalpy of hydration. Now we will learn about trends in the metal 3 plus ion to metal 2 plus ion standard electrode potentials. Based on the E0 value of metal 3 plus ion to metal 2 plus ion, we will come to know whether the metal 3 plus ion or the metal 2 plus ion is more stable. If E0 value of metal 3 plus ion to metal 2 plus ion is very high, then you will come to the conclusion metal 2 plus ion is more stable 
than its metal 3 plus ion. If E0 value of metal 3 plus ion to metal 2 plus ion is low, then you will understand metal 3 plus ion is more stable than its metal 2 plus ion. If you take scandium, E0 value of scandium 3 plus ion to scandium 2 plus ion is very low. This is because scandium 2 plus ion is less stable compared to scandium 3 plus ion. So scandium 2 plus ion will readily lose the electron. So it has less ionization enthalpy to get converted to scandium 3 plus ion. And next if you take zinc, zinc has high E0 value of Zn3 plus ion to Zn2 plus ion. This is because Zn2 plus ion is more stable than Zn3 plus ion. And next, if you take manganese, manganese also has very high E0 value. This is because manganese 2 plus ion has half filled deconfiguration and it is more stable than manganese 3 plus ion. Similarly, if you take Iron, iron has very low E0 value. This is because Fe3 plus ion is more stable than Fe2 plus ion. Similarly, if you take vanadium, vanadium also has low E0 value. This is because vanadium 3 plus ion is more stable than vanadium 2 plus ion. This vanadium 3 plus ion is more stable due to the half-filled T2G configuration. Regarding T2G configuration, we will learn under coordination compounds. Students, here I have given some of the frequently asked questions based on electrode potential. Kindly learn. I suppose you can understand these answers. Now we will discuss about trends in stability of higher oxidation state. In the tabular column, you can see the stable halides of the 3D series of the transition elements. Now we will discuss some important points regarding transition metal halides. Among halides, only fluoride is capable of forming metal fluorides in which metal are in their highest oxidation state. This is because of their higher lattice enthalpy as in the case of cobalt trifluoride or higher bond dissociation enthalpy as in the case of vanadium pentafluoride and chromium hexafluoride. The second point is vanadium Pentahalides undergoes hydrolysis to form vanadium oxy trihalide. Whereas vanadium pentafluoride is stable and it will not readily undergo hydrolysis. The third point is metal fluorides are unstable if the metals are in their lower oxidation state. This is because fluorine is more electronegative in nature and it oxidizes metal to its higher oxidation state. The next point is all cupric halides are known except cupric iodide. This is because cupric ion can oxidize iodide ion to iodine. The last point is, in aqueous solution, cuprous ion is unstable and it undergoes dispropanation reaction to give cupric ion and metallic copper. You may question why cuprous ion that is Cu plus ion is unstable whereas cupric ion that is Cu2 plus ion is more stable in aqueous solution. This is because Cu2 plus ion has high 
hydration, enthalpy, and that compensates for the energy required to remove an electron from Cu plus ion to form Cu2 plus ion. So, in aqueous medium, Cu plus ion gives Cu2 plus ion and copper. Here you have the table of stable oxides of the 3D series of the transition elements. Based on the oxides of 3D transition series, two questions are frequently asked. But for both the question, answer will be almost the same. The first question is, if you take manganese, it has highest oxidation state of plus 7 with oxygen. But with fluorine, it has the highest oxidation state of plus 4 only. Or they may question as, oxygen and fluorine both stabilizes highest oxidation state due to their non-metallic nature, but oxygen exits fluorine in doing so. The answer is, oxygen can form P pi D pi double bonds using 2P orbital of oxygen and 3D orbital of manganese. Whereas with fluorine, it can form only single bond. This is due to the unavailability of 2P orbitals in fluorine for multiple bonding. Now we will try to relate chemical reactivity and E0 values of transition elements. If you take the 3D series, the E0 value of metal 2 plus ion to metal becomes less negative as we move across the series. And we also have learnt, except copper, all the other elements of 3D series are having negative E0 values, which means they have tendency to lose electrons. We know if E0 value is negative, they have tendency to lose electrons. So only when these metals are treated with mineral acids, they have the tendency to dissolve in it. That is, they will get oxidized when they are treated with this mineral acid. For example, when a element is treated with HCl, the HCl will get converted to hydrogen. So, H plus ion will get converted to hydrogen by gaining electrons from the elements and the elements will get oxidized. This is because most of the elements except copper are having negative E0 values. Next point if you see, all the metals of first transition series are more reactive than copper. Now try to answer why copper is not so reactive. This is because copper has positive E0 Cu2 plus ion to Cu value. So that's the reason it will not get oxidized readily and it will not get dissolved in mineral acids.